Hello friends welcome to my channel Adi Ananta Mitsuwa is a young shrine maiden who's bored of her life in the quiet town of Idamori she yells i'm sick of this town i'm sick of this life please make me into a hot tokyo guy instead which brings us to our other protagonist called Taki who happens to be the hot tokyo guy this is where the first body switch between Taki and Mitsuha takes place shown near the beginning but it actually happens later you see taki and mitsuha are not only living in two different places but also different timelines taki is in the year 2016 while mitsuha is in 2013 so when they switch bodies mitsuha goes 3 years into the future and taki goes 3 years into the past during this first switch they have no idea who the other person is and believe it's all just a dream and since the two teenagers think they're dreaming they unwittingly embarrass the other in their respective lives we then go back in time where we discover that it all began 1200 years ago when a comet suddenly appeared and struck the earth creating a lake that the town called it a moor would be built upon this comet is due to come again spelling disaster when it strikes fast forward to our movie's timeline and mitsuha's mother dies This would lead to her father abandoning his family and his duties to the Shinto shrine that they have been entrusted with. Instead he goes into politics and becomes the mayor of Itamori. Abandoned by their father and left without a mother Mitsuha and her sister would then be raised by their grandma and taught the traditions of the shrine including how to make kuchi kamazake which is made by chewing rice and spitting it out to let it ferment. When Mitsuha grows up she and her sister perform the ceremony to create her kuchi kamazake which will play a vital part in connecting Taki and Mitsuha later on we learned that the shrine maidens follow certain rituals to worship their gods it's because of this there's a freaky friday type power that's been passed down through the shrine maidens who follow these rituals the main reason for this gift is so the town's people can be warned about the impending comments and prevent future tragedies back to the present while mitsuha is in taki's body she receives a text on his phone and finds out that taki works at a restaurant realizing that she is running late mitsuha discovers that being taki is harder than it seems and is unprepared to work at a restaurant making several mistakes during the night a bratty customer wants free food but since he can't get it he picks a fight with taki or mitsu i guess taki's elder colleague kaldokura comes over to take care of the situation and the guy even cuts her skirt with a box cutter after hours mitsu has spots the cut in his co-worker's skirt and offers to fix it she is taken aback by this and is astonished that Taki now has a feminine side Taki is back to normal the following day and when he goes to work his co-workers want to know more about his relationship with Okudura but he doesn't know what they're talking about all of a sudden miss Okira comes in and wishes everyone a good day winking at Taki making him blush Taki and Mitsuha now realize that they're not dreaming and that they're uncontrollably body swapping. They take steps to assist each other when they trade bodies and create ground rules by writing messages to each other in a number of ways. So they don't step on each other's toes. Mitsuha's rules say that he must be polite and have good manners at all times. Also he is not allowed to shower well in her body. On the other hand, Taki cautions Mitsuha to not waste his hard-earned money on desserts and candy since he will have to work overtime if he has no money despite their best efforts they can't help themselves and have a little fun at the expense of the other at school Taki manages to make a few guys fall in love with Mitsuha meanwhile Mitsuha flirts with Miss Okutera giving Taki a real chance to become frustrated at one another for violating their regulations and when Mitsuha switches back to her body her family and friends are all worried about her as they noticed she hadn't been like herself Mitsuha's friends fill her in about how strange she was acting and how she forgot all about her locker and even how to do her hair 
so it confirms it for her that all she experienced was not a dream after all this causes Mitsuha to track down Taki and meet him however what she doesn't know yet is that they're in different timelines. So when they switched bodies it was three years into the future. So when Mitsuha is present, Taki has no idea who she is, Mitsuha finally tracks him down on the subway. But because they had not switched bodies yet in his timeline, he doesn't recognize her. Her last effort to make a connection to Taki is to give him her ribbon. She uses to tie up her hair. When she does she tells him her name, which helps establish their bond to one another. Mitsuha returns home. Just in time for the festival her hometown throws every year during the festival the comet from before appears. And as the comet splits apart all of Idamori is destroyed. And Mitsuha dies too. Three years pass and Taki finds himself in Mitsuha's body. This is an alternate timeline. Before Mitsuha dies but also before Taki and her ever meet these switches happen for several weeks and happen about twice a week at random. The common trigger for the body switching is sleep. When Taki goes to bed, sometimes he'll wake up as himself, and sometimes he'll wake up as Mitsuha. During this time Taki and Mitsuha get to know each other more by experiencing each other's lives. They develop their own little system of communicating Mitsuha leaves notes in Taki's diary for him to read. When he returns to his body after a while, Taki wants nothing more than to meet this girl he's been body swapping. He gathers her surroundings and makes sketches of the town but it never really occurs to him to ask what the name of her town is the switch is soon stop. As Mitsuha died in her timeline and Taki wants to find out more about the girl he's been switching with he takes his friends and they journey into the countryside. Taki soon discovers the fate of Idamori. The town that was destroyed three years ago when the comet fell, the journal entries Mitsuho left also delete themselves off Taki's phone and any trace of this girl's existence is gone. Except for the red ribbon Taki kept wrapped around his wrists. From there Taki learns about the tragedy of Idimori, how many people died and just how much destruction the comet left. After it struck the town on the last day, Taki was in Mitsuha's body. He remembers a shrine. He visited that house something belonging to Mitsuha's family. He didn't know exactly where it was, but he knew it would have a clue as to what he could do. After some searching he finds the shrine nestled at the center of a crater. Left behind from when a comet hit Japan thousands of years ago. But it's a separate comet from the one that made the lake at Idamori, and the one that killed Mitsuha inside the shrine. Taki finds that Kuchi Kamazake Mitsuha had made as well as a mural depicting the comet splitting off across the sky. Taki drinks the Kuchi Kamazake that Mitsuha made and sees her family's history. He witnesses Mitsuha's mother dying and her father leaving all at once. He manages to see everything that led up to this point and miraculously Taki wakes up in Mitsuha's body once again. On the day the comet is going to strike the town. We discovered that the Kuchi Kamazaki contains part of Mitsuha's soul so when Taki drinks it the two connect allowing them to swap bodies. All this time when Taki and Mitsuha switch bodies everyone else thinks that the two are having off days. But grandma figures out what's happened. She tells Taki and Mitsuha's body that heightened spiritual abilities have been passed down in the family for generations. While her dad had long abandoned the family traditions, even he realizes that the person he's speaking to is not his daughter Taki. Knows what he has to do next which is to save the people of Itamori from being destroyed by the comet. He gathers up Mitsuhu his friends and tries to stage a bomb scare at the town festival. So that the citizens will evacuate to the school building which is outside the comet's danger zone the plan goes underway. But while people are confused and scared of the bomb. Scare talk it's not enough to convince people to evacuate. And no one is taking their warnings about the comet serious. While the plan is underway. There is one thing Taki has to do to make sure it all goes right. 
He has to get Mitsuha back to her own timeline in order to help save her town back at the shrine Twilight approaches, and where different worlds blend together. Taki and Mitsuha meet they're still in each other's bodies but the two finally meet and recognize one another for the first time, emotions run high and Taki returns Mitsuha's red ribbon. The ribbon that she gave him when they first met, by returning the ribbon, Taki accidentally severed their connection they try and write each other's names. On the other person's palm but twilight soon ends, and the bond is broken Taki is back in his own body, and timeline and Mitsuha is back in hers but the comet is about to hit and the plan to scare everyone into the school building has failed. People are not aware of the danger she only has one chance to save her family and her town, and that involves convincing her dad to allow the emergency services to evacuate the town. While she struggles to run down a mountain and back into town, she struggles to remember the person she bonded with up, there Taki didn't get to write his name. But he did manage to write I love you on Mitsuha's palm, she doesn't remember who wrote this, or how it got on her hand, but she can feel something inside her something that gives her the strength to push on against the impossible odds. She reaches her father in time and manages to evacuate the city just before the comet strikes, now that the town is saved the timelines merge into one and because Mitsuha never died she and Taki live in the present. And because Taki returned Mitsuha's ribbon neither of them remember the other's name, it's like all the events that led up to this point suddenly vanished. However that's not to say that they have completely forgotten one another, 12 years have passed and the two live their lives normally though both of them. Get the feeling that something or someone is missing from their lives. We see Taki has graduated college and is now looking for work in Tokyo, but he's not having any luck. While he's on the train another passes by, and someone catches his eye, he can't remember where but he feels like he might have met that person in another life. The two frantically look for one another, they finally meet, Taki meets Mitsuha properly for the first time. They ask for one another's name and the anime ends here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on the notification.